we are continuing our look at what we need to consider when we set up a supply chain. So first we need to consider the extent of integration, how much information sharing is happening. Are we going to own the company or are we going to share information and what level of sharing are we going to have? Are we going to just talk to them periodically, share uh, observations, or are we going to give them access to our databases? And you have to remember there's a risk associated with that uh, when you're giving another company access to your proprietary information. So how close of a relationship is there going to be? Then we have to consider logistics. What are the costs to move our work in process, our raw materials, our completed product, both internally and externally, as well as the inventory carrying costs, that is our storage and the value tied up in the materials. The third thing we need to consider is the level of technology that we're using. There is a technology available for sharing information as well as for tracking our uh, work in process uh, and raw materials. So let's take a look at those. So as we look at technology, the first one we want to look at is what is called EDI or electronic data interchange. This is where you are sharing purchase orders, sales data, um, should say shipping notices and invoices across the supply chain. So here with EDI, we have software and every part of the supply chain can essentially log in and see the same information. So all parts of the supply chain can see the orders they come in uh, from the customers to the retailer. And the idea with this is it should reduce delays and reduce the bullet effect because we don't have that lack of communication or that uncertainty about how much inventory we should order. Okay, so we should see a we shouldn't see those swings in inventory too much too little as we're sharing information. Well, EDI is just a software that shares uh, information, shares data. You can actually get uh, ERP which is Enterprise Resource Planning, and this takes it one step further and it transforms that data into business decisions. So it's going to decide how much inventory is needed, uh, how much is on hand, how much do we need to produce, when do we need to produce it. Uh, so you can buy a software, um, Enterprise uh, Resource or Requirement Planning, uh, that will actually take that shared data and turn it into decisions for parts of your supply chain. And if we're just looking at uh, that database where you're sharing information that different parts of your supply chain can log into, then it's an EDI. Now as we're tracking our uh, the movement or logistics of our um, work in process and raw materials, we can use what are called RFIDs. So RFIDs are a bit different from barcodes. Uh, barcodes don't have as much information and we, so we scan a barcode so we could keep track of our inventory by every time a piece moves from one location to another we could scan a barcode but with an RFID uh, we can then track it without having to do the physical scan so we can use radio waves to identify our objects they can be uh, passive, so every time it moves past a reader, then it detects the RFID and takes the information. And the RFID will have more information than a barcode. Or you can have an active RFID, so it has a battery attached to it, and then it actually transmits a signal so you could track all of your inventory as it moves. If you want to see an example of a... Um, a passive one, okay, so maybe you've been on uh, campus and you've seen throughout campus these little icons here um, for our security. These are actually RFIDs and so our security guards as they patrol the area to make sure that they have checked all the locations of our building uh, within every hour then what they do is they take a reader and they and they scan that and so it captures information what time did they go by 
and so um, it can be used to track um, progress. In this case of uh, people, oops, sorry, um, as opposed to our inventory. Active RFIDs are ones that talk to satellites. So maybe you have family members that have lived somewhere or you've lived somewhere uh, where you have like an easy pass, right on a toll road. And the easy pass um, actually uh, transmits information. So it's sending a signal. Um, when it comes to a lot of the, um, like when you can track your packages that are on trucks and you can know what city it's in, um, if it has um, an active RFID, you can see or the company can see as it moves from one location to another because it's sending a signal to a satellite. If it's more passive, you have to wait until that truck gets to a location where it gets scanned. But we can track our inventory as it moves throughout the supply chain. Third thing we have to look at when it comes to technology is, is e-commerce. And we look at e-commerce, uh, what we're looking at is the use of computers. And the internet for buying and selling. So we have a website where we can go get information and some kind of process for online order fulfillment. Now when it comes to e-commerce, we have B2C and B2B. So B2C is business to customer, right? You order from Amazon, you get your item delivered. When we're talking about supply chain, we're talking about B2B, so business to business. And why would you want, as part of your supply chain, uh, for you to place your orders online instead of having to fill out paperwork in triplicate uh, like we used to or send fax orders why would you want to use e-commerce instead well the benefits of e-commerce is there well it's not right in red is that there is a reduction in clerical labor right we're going to spend less time and i'll have to pay as many people to fill out paperwork we're going to have a reduction in paperwork. We should have increased accuracy. That is less transcription errors. Because we're not having to rewrite out the order, right? You call on the phone, we take the order over the phone, and now we have to write it down. Well, what if we write it down wrong? That creates errors. Uh, with e-commerce, B2B, you're submitting your order online and the company on the other end can simply print it out and fulfill the order. So there should be less transcription errors, errors in, in writing or communicating uh, what people want. There should also be increased speed. We don't have to wait for, wait for paperwork to go through. Uh, it's quick and easy because it's sent the the system that we're using online receives the order and it immediately gets transmitted uh, to operations to fill that order so there are a number of benefits to using e-commerce and increasingly within the supply chain we're seeing uh, the use of online order fulfillment and then of course in addition to that you can share information uh, with those other parts of your supply chain using electronic data interchange.